I'd like to say great day to the viewing audience. Welcome to Walking in the Spirit. I am Dr. Stefan Williams, and I will be your host for today's broadcast. We're going to continue on with our series entitled, The Tabernacle Pattern Compared to the Physical Body. And those of you that are viewing this broadcast today, I would like for you to get out your Bibles, your notebooks, your pens, your pencils, your highlighters, and study with us. Let's continue on with the series. says, the cranial or head cavity of man's physical body corresponds with the most holy place of the Mosaic Tabernacle. The right and left halves of the brain which come together in the midline corresponds with the two archangels the two archangels and the two main functions of the brain one in carrying out some action motor function corresponds to the duties to the duties of Michael and two the sending and receiving of messages sensory function corresponds with the duties of Gabriel the brain itself is composed of gray and white matter likened unto the cloud which overshadowed the mercy seat and it is by means of our brain that we are in touch with and minutely aware of everything going on around us. It is really like one great big cycloptic eye in our hearts, excuse me, in our heads. Once again, it is really like one big cycloptic eye in our heads. Even the two eyes see as one. The pineal gland located in the center of the brain was likened to the, soplic, the cycloptic eye by the ancient or Greek mythologists and also was thought to be the seat of all sensations. The two lobes of the pituitary gland, the master gland of the body, corresponds to the two tables of the Mosaic Law. Score correspond to the tables of the Mosaic Law. And they are placed in the bony receptacle in the base of the brain and are covered over with by a covering just as the lid covered the ark of the covenant. In our diagram on the on the right, you will see the word law in the mouth 
of the figure. If you zoom in right there and come back out, you see the word there, law, L-A-W. We understand the Ten Commandment law was placed in the Ark of the Covenant. See, pull back on these everything again. This is to show the close approximation of the pituitary gland in the roof of the mouth and it is out of the mouth and it is out of the mouth that the law proceeds I need you read reader please Malachi the second chapter and verse 6 please Malachi 2 and 6 from the Holy Name Bible the law of truth was in his mouth and iniquity was not found in his lips he walked with me in peace and iniquity, and did turn many away from iniquity. Thank you, reader. The vision of the Shekinah, seen in the cloud in the most holy place of the tabernacle, can be correlated with the configuration of the blood vessels supplying the brain which takes which takes the shape of a stick figure of a man, Elohim. Okay. Just get right here the stick figure of a man, Elohim, which is here. Elohim, super corporeal form. All right. So chart again, up, up top side this yeah. The second veil in the Mosaic Tabernacle divides the most holy place from the holy place. And is blue. See the Colors there, the veils, blue, purple, and scarlet red. This corresponds with the neck of man's physical body. You see it there, blue, purple, and scarlet red, and, and, and man's. Neck reading. This corresponds with the neck of man's physical body, which, which divides the head or the cranial cavity from the chest cavity. All the blood vessels passing to the head, all the blood vessels passing to the head, see, are gathered together in the neck in one great profusion the veins colored blue to denote impure blood see the arteries colored red or scarlet to denote pure or oxygenated blood in the presence of the iodine filled thyroid gland iodine means violet or purple denotes the purple of this dividing veil in the neck. See. Okay. In the holy place, see it's here holy place, of the Mosaic Tabernacle divides, excuse me, in the holy place of the Mosaic Tabernacle one sees the high priest standing at the golden altar 
Once again, in the holy place of the Mosaic Tabernacle, one seat the high priest standing at the golden altar of incense, burning incense, which consisted of four principal ingredients called stacti, onicha, galbanum, and frankincense, which were sweet, odoriferous spices. I need a red reader, please. Exodus. No, excuse me. I'll read that. I'll read that, please. Just a moment, ladies and gentlemen. Exodus. The 30th chapter. Starting at the 34th verse. Once again, I'll be reading Exodus, the 30th chapter, starting at the 34th verse, all the way to the end of the 38th verse from the Holy Name Bible. It says, And Yahweh said unto Moses, Take unto, take unto these sweet spices, stack they, Onisha, Galbanum, these sweet spices with pure frankincense, of which shall there be a light weight, and thou shalt make it an incense of perfume after the ark, the ark of the perfumer, tempered together, pure and holy. And thou shalt beat some of it very small and put up and, and, and put of it before the testimony in the meeting tent of the congregation which I will meet with thee. It shall be unto you most holy. And as for the perfume which, which thou shalt make, you shall not make to yourselves according to the composition thereof. It shall be unto, unto thee holy for Yahweh. Whosoever shall make light unto that to smell thereto shall even be cut off from his people. All right. It says, this incense perfumed the entire tabernacle and ascended through the second veil into the most holy place, place where Yahweh dwelled in the cloud above the mercy seat and was a sweet smelling savor to him for it represented the intercession made by the Holy Spirit Elohim to the Father Yahweh. <coughs> Excuse me. The seven branch golden candlestick, which is here, can be seen on the left in the holy place, and it gave light unto the sanctuary, so that there was never any darkness there or therein. See? It was this, it was extinguished at nine o'clock in the morning when the daylight illuminated the sanctuary. It was, it was trimmed and made ready for the relighting at 3 o'clock in the afternoon when daylight began to fade. It would, it would burn all through the night until the next morning. All of the seven branches of it proceeded out of the main stem on either side, and it was filled with oil from the main stem. The golden table, is here, of shoe bread can be seen on the right side of the holy place with its two rolls of bread, six loaves on each side. 
making a total of 12 loaves of bread. It is a four-sided furnishing with a golden crown around the border of it. The high priest ate daily of the bread on the table of shoe bread which was kept ever present for him. This was his daily sustenance as well as the meat offering and drink offering of which he partook. Comparing the holy place of the tabernacle with the chest cavity of the physical body, one finds the lungs serving the same capacity, the lungs serving the same capacity or function as the golden altar of incense. To be real polytechnical, one finds that the larynx situated above the windpipe, which is here, or trachea that has two superior cornal or horns. See, see those horns like a cornal up here? And two inferior cornu, just as the golden altar of incense had four horns on it. The golden altar of incense had four horns on it. One at each corner. The air which we breathe is composed mainly of four ingredients. Nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and hydrogen as aqueous vapor, which corresponds to the four principal ingredients of the incense burned on the golden altar of incense. Yes, and air or oxygen is burned in our bodies for the process of oxidation, which is the uniting of oxygen with other substances in a burning process. It need not be said that breathing of good fresh air is a sweet smelling savor unto all the tissues of the body. All the tissues of the body. And that is fragranized all of the body just as the incense did the tabernacle. The brain corresponding to the cloud where Yahweh dwell see, is especially expectant and desirous of this air or oxygen as it is the most vulnerable of all the body tissues when it comes to oxygen lack. Remember the incense wafting through the second veil, see, through the second veil into the most holy place, 
let us re let us remind the reader of this point that Yahweh forbade anyone to duplicate to duplicate the holy incense, and only the high priest knew how to make it. I need red reader, please. Exodus, the thirtieth chapter. The 37th and 38 verses, please. Exodus 30, 37 and 38 from the Holy Name Bible. And as for the perfume which thou shalt make, ye shall not make it yourself according to the composition thereof. It shall be unto the unto unto the holy for Yahweh. Whosoever shall make like unto that to smell thereto shall even be cut off from the people. Thank you, reader. Doesn't this compare beautifully with the fact that no one has yet been able to determine the exact composition of air which only Yahweh knows? The seven brass golden candlestick, which is here, corresponds with the aorta, that great blood vessel, see, which comes off the heart, see, and has just seven branches, which distribute oxygenated blood to all the body. To all the body, see? The in no mighty artery coming off of the arc of the aorta typifies the main stem of the candlestick here. And it gives off the right common corotid and right subclavian arteries. The left common carotid and left subclavian also come off of the arc of the aorta. And the right and left coronary arteries come off the off of the ascending aorta. The descending aorta is a uh, thoracic portion. Gives all numerous branches, which are too small to diminish its size. The blood circulating through the great vessel, the aorta, gives life. Unto the whole body, see, gives life unto the whole body. Continuously day and night, just as all burning, continuously day and night, just as oil burning in the golden candlestick furnished continually light unto the tabernacle. Even the flickering of the light of the candlestick can be likened unto the pulsation of the aorta and its branches. The golden table of shoe bread, which is here, compares with the four chambered heart. At the golden candlestick was placed on the on the one side of the holy place, and the golden table of shoe bread on the other side. So is the heart place 
more to the left and the aorta more to the right side of the body. The four chambers of the heart compared with the four corners of the table of shoe bread. See? The bread placed in two rows of the table signifies to two halves of the heart. See? The right and the left. The golden crown around the border of the table corresponds to the coronary, which means crown, see. vessels encircling the heart, see. and the heart is truly one's daily bread, for it is by the constant beating of the heart that life is sustained. And that will conclude this week's series. Until we meet again next week, I like to leave with a few words. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the precious kingdom of Yahweh Elohim, Yahshua Messiah. Hallelujah.